Hey everybody, so I've been wondering about this question for quite a while. Does changing your tubes in your amp actually affect the tone of that amp? Well, let's see what happens when you put four different sets of tubes into the same amp with the same settings. What an incredible difference in tones! Get out your wallets, guys! It's time to spend way too much money on new tubes for your amp! As a guitar player since 1985, I've heard an awful lot about vacuum tubes. Some of it might actually be in danger of being truthful. Apparently, if you find the right combination or stumble across American-made tubes from the 60s, your guitar sound will magically transform into something incredible! In fact, I've had a discussion with a client a few years ago while working on a record for him. He wanted to bring in his own 5150 amp because apparently mine wasn't good enough. Now, when I asked him why, he replied that his amp tech had put special tubes in it. And I was like, okay, great. What makes those tubes so special? and I got silence. Can't say I'm surprised. If you listen to many an expert on guitar forms, and believe me, there are no shortage of experts out there on guitar forms, vacuum tubes are made from a combination of fairy dust, unicorn sweat, and dragon tears. Because this tube sounds fuller, this tube sounds fatter, and this tube sounds shrill and brittle. Yeah, sure they do. But whatever you do, don't you dare ask any of these experts to produce evidence from a test where the only variable is the two. Apparently, the test has been done, but a leprechaun ran off with it. <laughs> it's astounding how many guitar players fall for this sort of garbage. I put the notion of the sound is in the hands to the test several years ago because it was something I had repeated many, many times. But when we ran the test, it turned out it's not even close to being true. When you eliminate the variables, guitar, amp, settings, cabinet, mic placement, pick, and just change out the player, the tone shift is utterly microscopic. Of course, there are many, many comments telling me how I got it wrong, but in six years, nobody has managed to do the same test and refute my findings. I'll put a link in the description below. You can check that video out after this one. And last summer, I reviewed the absolutely horrendous Clark Technic 2B Cube. It was just terrible. And before anybody could go crazy in the comments suggesting, you just need to put better tubes in it, I did exactly that. I put brand new expensive tubes into it. The change in sound was so utterly minor, it wasn't worth the time or the expense. And this got me thinking. This is a test that needs to be done with guitar amps because guitar players will go on and on and on about tubes, spewing all sorts of mythology about how one brand sounds warmer, which is one of my favorite pro audio terms because it means absolutely nothing, or another brand sounds fizzy. In fact, I fell for the exact same stories and spent countless hours retubing my 5150 searching for some sort of holy grail tone that never materialized. Because no matter what I did, the app still sounded like a 5150. The problem is human perception is flawed. By the time you've turned your amp off, let it cool down, swap the tubes out, and fired it back up again, you've lost your frame of reference. Couple that with the need for purchase validation because you just dropped an awful lot of money on a new set of tubes, and of course you're gonna hear an improvement. Because vacuum tubes have a bit of a religion built up around them, facts rarely matter, and the placebo effect is real. Now, the general consensus around the guitar community is that swapping power tubes won't make that much of a difference in tone as long as the tubes haven't been worn out. And power tubes can certainly do that. I've seen it happen in the middle of a jam session where my friend's JCM800 went out with a whimper. We put in some fresh tubes, powered it up, and away we went. According to online lore, the big shifts in tone come when you start swapping out preamp tubes. Preamp tubes tend to last far longer than power tubes and can even last the lifetime of your amp as long as they don't go microphonic. Well, I just happen to have a box full of these things as over the last couple of decades, I've both swapped out preamp and power tubes in my failed quest for the perfect tone. But for this video, instead of randomly changing out tubes and saying, wow, what a difference, I thought we'd try something different. 
we're going to use the scientific method because we've all heard the same hypothesis. Changing tubes in a guitar amp will affect the overall sound. Now, the test I've created will isolate the tube variable while eliminating all the rest. I've seen other tube swap videos, but I've got no way of telling if a microphone has been bumped in between recordings. Because moving a mic even a few millimeters on a cabinet will have a huge effect on the tone. <laughs> And it's usually a guy playing new takes into an amp, so there's no way of telling if the mic gain has been turned up or down or the amp settings have been changed. There's too many variables. So to get around that, we're going to be using three critical pieces of equipment. First, a signal art reamp box, so we get exactly the same performance every time. The amp itself will be outputting into a two notes Captor X, so we can eliminate the cabinet and microphone variable. Because this test is going to be performed over several days, the risk of bumping a microphone and therefore ruining the test is too great. Instead, the captor is seen by the amp as a speaker and it will react in the same manner. And I'll be able to use an impulse response to achieve the exact same speaker mic combo every single time. And last, we're going to be going into a Neve 1073 OPX preamp, which has stepped gain in 1 dB increments for precisely repeatable results. Needless to say, none of the amp settings are going to be changed either. Now we're going to test both preamp and power amp tubes and use four different amps so we can get a broad picture of what's happening. The one thing I won't be doing are bias adjustments on any of the amps power sections. Changing how hot the power tubes run will have an effect on the amps output level as well as the life of the tubes. I'm not challenging that. The amps I mainly use in my day to day have fixed bias anyway. I'm more concerned with finding out just how much of a difference preamp tubes of the same type but different brand will make. And to hear any difference at all will run null tests on the tracks. That's when you have two light tracks of audio, flip the polarity on one, and if they're the same, they'll cancel each other out. What remains is how much of a change is being made. Last summer, we put the Clark Technic up against a real Pultec and it failed the null test miserably. <laughs> All right, first up, the Joyo Zombie, a single tube in the preamp and a solid state power section. I've got several different 12AX7 tubes, plus a 12AT7 and a 12AY7. Let's hear what happens. Well, that's not what I expected to hear. Where are the massive tone shifts? All I can hear is a change in level. Let's hear that soloed up. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe it's because it's a single tube amp. Let's try the test on a real tube amp. The 5150 needs five preamp tubes. That's sure to have much more of a difference than this piddly little single tube wannabe amp that was made in China. What's going on? Now, while I might've heard an extremely slight volume boost with the JJ tubes, the actual tone is being changed very little. And that becomes quite apparent when we run the null test. <laughs> Okay, well, trying different preamp tubes really doesn't make much of a difference. So what about power tubes? That's where the big change is gonna be. Let's run some 6L6 tubes versus EL34s. That'll make a huge difference. All right, something's gotta be wrong here. It's gotta be that we're running high gay tests. Yeah, that's the ticket. Too much distortion is clotting the results and we can't hear anything clearly. You'll only ever be able to hear the difference on a clean tone. At least that's what the cork sniffers out there are gonna tell you. Well, just so happens I've got a 1959 Fender Pro on hand. I certainly hope it's a good enough example for all the vintage tone elitists out there. Tell you what, let's run a clip with three different sets of tubes in it and see what happens.
Well, that was unexpected. It certainly didn't get me the results endless discussions in online forums have been telling me to expect. In fact, when we start doing null tests, things get very interesting. Seems when the guitars are clean, they almost cancel each other out completely. It's only when the preamp tubes are pushed into overdrive that there is an apparent difference. And even then, it's extremely minimal. From what I'm hearing, there really isn't any kind of frequency shift at all. The tubes are merely distorting at a different threshold. So what's this all mean? Well, when there is a difference, it's a volume change, not a tone change. And we perceive louder as better. That's why we had the volume wars in the early 2000s with CDs being mastered louder and louder, much to the detriment of music in general. But when you have a frame of reference, the apparent volume change really isn't that much to write home about. Now we've all seen numerous posts claiming, I changed my tubes and I can hear a difference. Yet these never seem to be backed up by any kind of AB comparison and certainly not where the guitar is reamped. Full disclosure, I don't have any agenda with this video other than to see what's really going on with tubes. Nobody is sponsoring this video. All I want to get out of this is the truth. Will swapping your tubes change the sound of your amp? And the answer is, unless your tubes are failing, probably not. Not in any kind of significant way. If you're playing a clean 59 Fender and riding the overdrive threshold, one set of tubes may react differently than another they may break up quicker, so that can definitely lead to a change in how the guitar is played expressively. But is it gonna change the overall frequency signature of the amp? No. One could argue that it will change the feel of the amp, and there may even be some truth to that, but I've yet to see anyone devise a test for feel. Usually, feel is a term guitar players throw around to describe other players that they don't like. Oh, that guy's not playing with any kind of feeling. Yeah, it's a great way to sound like you know what you're talking about without having to provide evidence of any kind. Changes are even less apparent if you're a high gain player, as we just proved with the 5150 test. There may be a very slight difference, but the change you'll make in your tone is most definitely not worth the cost of retubing your amp. Not when there are better options for what will have far more impact, like changing your cabinet's speakers. The tone change between a vintage 30, a creamback, and a greenback are massive. Or if you're recording an amp, the differences you'll get between an SM57, an MD421, and the new Austrian Audio OC818 are light years beyond what you'll get by swapping your tubes. Especially the OC818, as you can alter the polar pattern in post and dial in the perfect tone. So an Omni. So if the null tests still haven't convinced you, ponder this. The Synergy line of guitar amps have interchangeable preamps. I've got the Plexi, Soldano, HBE, and Diesel preamps, and they all give the amp their own unique sound, yet they all use the exact same tube in each module. 
And this is because it's the circuit design which gives the amp its sound. It's also why a Fender sounds like a Fender and a 5150 sounds like a 5150. Changing tubes will not change this fact. But I suspect that even after presenting all of this evidence, there are many out there who will disregard this video and forge ahead with their own pointless quest to find the perfect combination of vacuum tubes. I'd suggest that those people start their search right next to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Just watch out for that leprechaun though, he might get you.